Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we make the improbable possible and practical. Today we're going to build a power sphere. Here we have a large rotor with a small rotor head, our projector, and an arm that will connect us to our projected power sphere. And we're settled somewhere on an asteroid around the alien planet. As we go through this, I'll kind of describe how this power sphere is put together. This portion itself is going to be your doorway area. Essentially, it's going to have an airtight door built into the ship. But we'll have to do a little bit of modification because when you project it from a blueprint, it does erase the primary functions of the door. As you might be able to see, there are four timer blocks and a few batteries, and then the merge blocks will appear that secure the door. This is complete ion drive. Of course, you might be able to incorporate hydrogen power if you want. And this entire thing is powered by a few small nuclear reactors. Now in the game, if you haven't reached the point of finding uranium, you could still use ice to propel this. It doesn't use that much electricity. So a few hydrogen engines would still fit in the bay. This is generally the same shape sphere as what I used before or illustrated before in how to build a sphere video. I like to make sure that I put together the internal workings first. Otherwise, once you start building the walls, it gets kind of difficult to work around them. On this power sphere, we have two assault cannons on the front side. Here's one of the power cannons, and as we build up, you'll be able to see the other one. On the sides, we have two Gatling turrets. And there they are. Additionally, there are two ion drives on each side as well to kind of keep you stabilized. There's four on the bottom and four on the top. We have our O2 H2 generator here. Make sure you get all the blocks underneath it. Otherwise, the wall won't seal properly. And there's the start of our right side. You can see the two ion drives and two Gatling cannons. This is the hinge for the door, but we'll get back to it in a minute. As you see, my piston did not come attached to this. There is supposed to be a piston with a door already built on it. But because blueprints can only print certain things, it makes it a requirement to have to build it afterwards. With most of the primary components already installed in the bottom here, I'm just going to start building up the side walls and see how far we get before I need to refocus on building more utility items. Inside of the side walls, or the corner walls, I should say, are also batteries. So make sure that you catch that and build the batteries and don't forget that they're hidden within the wall. There's one now. A 
I think the overall time to build this power sphere from the blueprint was about 45 minutes. And part of that time was trying to figure out putting the door back together and making sure the settings were correct where it would actually seal again. Don't worry though, it shouldn't take you as long as long as you watch this video all the way through. Not looking too bad, this is almost one side completely done. I did try to color coordinate everything on here, so your ion drives are essentially the same color as the part of the wall that they're attached to. Same goes for all your tubing and conveyor connectors. This one goes all the way to the front and feeds the top auto cannon. Above here, we have a rotating assault cannon as well, which can shoot up to 1400 meters. So it gives you a longer range to target different drones or enemies before they get that close to you. Unfortunately, artillery cannons cannot be built on a small grid, so the most we could do is an assault cannon. Better check these conveyors. I find it's important if you're unsure if you already welded a piece or not to always go back and double check before you finish the wall. Otherwise you might not see that component again even after you turn off your projector. Well that's two sides done. Just going to start filling in the front here. You can see multiple gyros. And there's another battery. Another gyro. These batteries are two blocks tall and they're on all four corners. Since I'm in creative mode, the batteries will automatically turn green as soon as they're built. If you're in survival mode, they'll turn green, but they're not going to be fully charged for a while. We have our connector in the back, and then we also put two large ion drives in the back. It helps definitely propel this a little bit faster than using a bunch of small ion drives.
I did put small angular blocks around the large ion drives on the inside because ion drives themselves don't necessarily match up directly with the wall and won't create a complete seal. So you can see as I'm building this wall in around it, it'll seal off that minor gap that they create. This area is your mid-range floor. All right, that looks like the back wall. Just hit a few blocks here and there. Last section is to do this front and then we should be able to put in the mid-level floor. And in front of this, there are two by one windows going across. It's kind of a windshield. You can always change it out or put angular ones there, but the two by ones keep it the same sphere shape. All right, time for the inside. I'm gonna hit all these lower blocks first. Make sure we get these upper blocks in the corners. The floor of this is fairly simplistic and it does drop down one level for our seating control position. Looks like I got pretty much everything around here, maybe odds and ends. This is the drop down floor and then you should be able to see the control seat populate on top of it. How do I get this light? There we are. And there's our control seat. Okay, now I think we got everything on this lower area. So we'll just have to focus possibly on the door. Oh, that battery, I didn't get that yet. The first time I did try to do this, I accidentally attached the piston to the side of the wall instead of the hinge. So make sure when you're attaching the piston, it attaches to the top of the hinge. It's a general layout. I have one steel block on top of the piston head and then two merge blocks, one pointing out from each other, and then a small steel block pointing 90 degrees from the head. And I'm using these half blocks and the half angle blocks for the door itself. 
If you use full blocks for the door, when you merge them together using the merge blocks, they probably won't come back undone. And you'll be locked in there until you destroy the blocks. Or they'll have a hard time fitting into the space. That should be about right. I'll show you the general settings I use for these. Starting with the piston here. For the piston, I moved it to one meter. That way it fits almost perfectly center. If you find it doesn't fit exact center, it won't seal off the door. Next, I'm gonna show you timer block close one, setup action, the hinge is gonna be reverse, and then we're gonna start timer block two. Timer block two close, I set it as a four second delay, and then the actions here, oh, since it didn't generate that piston originally, we're gonna have to add it back. But timer block two is supposed to reverse the piston and then lock the merge blocks. Reverse piston. And for the open, we're going to do pretty much the exact opposite. We're going to turn off the merge blocks, reverse the hinge, and then start timer block two for open. And timer block two again, we'll have to add the piston back. And we want these door locks to be off initially because we're not currently in the locked position. Hinge, we're going to reverse so it actually closes it. The piston, we're going to adjust to one meter. Oh, almost forgot. The velocity on here, we want to change it to about 0 0.2. That way it meets the speed of the hinge itself. Yeah, see, we extended a little bit too fast the first time because it was still on 0 0.5. So we're going to reverse this piston a little bit. And then it should drop back into place and then hit reverse again. There it is. And you can see there's kind of a gap here. So it's not exactly one meter, but it's about 0 0.95. So if you click control and type it in 0 0.95, it should line up almost perfectly at this point. See, no gap. Then turn the small merge blocks back on but we're gonna have to group them because these two small merge blocks, of course, weren't included because they were attached to the piston that wasn't showing on the blueprint. As long as you label it the same way, you won't have an issue with the timer blocks engaging. Okay, so they're all off. We want them to be locked though before we try to open because when you click the open, it's going to turn them off anyways. And we'll have the wrong order. Seems like we're not automatically pressurizing for some reason. Maybe we have gaps somewhere. Well, let me finish this floor in and then we'll go outside and take a look. All right, so we should be able to open this door. It unlocks, has that short delay, and then retracts. Kind of reminds me of a capsule on a submarine. Don't see anything here.
It might be kind of difficult seeing which blocks are not already done while you have the projector on because they're not that much difference in color. They'll be kind of transparent, but not complete. Let's just make sure that around our converter and connector are cleared as well. In order to do this, I just destroyed them and I'm going to turn off the projector to see if we missed any of the blocks surrounding it. Really doesn't look like it. So there shouldn't be any gaps when we turn it back on. Oh, hey, we missed a whole wall here. Well, I suppose we're going to have to touch that up. Oh, this could cause a problem too. There's a hole right through the side. Note to self, if you can't pressurize, check for gaps. Turn off the projector, see if you're missing any blocks, and then go ahead and turn on the projector again and fill in those blocks. See, this whole wall, this front window, the connectors, and I think that was about it. All right, let's close the door. And this time when we close the door, it should actually pressurize if we've hit every block we needed to. And there it is, locked in place. Oh, it looks like we are pressurizing. Indeed, we have a high oxygen rate and it is warm in here. Well, that's a relief. I'd hate to be flying through space without any oxygen. Let's just go ahead and open it again. And we should be able to detach ourselves from the rotor and try this ship out. Kind of a tight squeeze here, but I guess it still works. Now we're disconnected, just close the door. This is kind of a slow door when you're watching it, but it's fairly efficient at the same time. It's out of the way and works with this sphere fairly decent. All right, now we're, we're disconnected. Let's see. Ion drives on so we can repower. Oh yeah, I shut off the small lower one earlier because it kept cutting through the arm. So that's why I cycled the ion drives on and off multiple times to make sure that that back lower one also turns on. Seems pretty easy to maneuver. Might look like an ugly face on the back of it though. I've rigged the keyboard so you have your auto cannons like this, a number one slot. They fire fairly rapidly. And the Gatling cannons are the number two button. Not bad, not bad. And then of course the number three is set up to control the artillery turret. The artillery turret will also automatically shoot at enemies but I put it on control just for the heck of it in case we want to target something ourselves. It's quite a range on this thing. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and please leave your tips and tricks in the comments section. I appreciate it.